A major budget cut to Canada's biggest municipal police service is now off the table. We've been following this closely. Uh, a couple of days of debate started yesterday with Toronto City Councilors rejecting a move to reduce funding by 10 percent. It was a, a 16 to 8 vote against the motion. Would have cut about $150 million from the budget. $1.2 billion is uh, the cost of Toronto's police service and would have redirected that money toward anti-racism and social services. Toronto Police Chief Mark Saunders says it's too soon to make those kinds of changes and he warns that doing so could jeopardize community safety. If the present system today was built so that there are things that we did not do, then it would be an appropriate time to look at that. But right now, mm -hmm. if there's a call at a specific time, we're going to be the only ones de facto that have to go there. Right now, there are a lot of things that need to be done first in order to start reducing what our role's responsibilities need to be. A series of other reforms put forward by Mayor John Tory did receive approval, including mandatory body cameras for officers. That's to take effect by the start of next year. A report into the creation of a non-police response team for mental health calls, how that would work. We're going to talk more about this with the city councillor who put forward the motion to reduce the police budget by that 10% figure. That's councillor Josh Matlow, who's with me live. And councillor Matlow, welcome to the program. I thank you for your time. My pleasure. Good morning. I'm wondering your reaction to your motion's defeat yesterday, sir. Well, obviously I'm disappointed. Um, but I do believe that we've uh, certainly, you know, moved, we, we've advanced the, the issue uh, significantly. Um, eight of my colleagues uh, together, we, we voted to move forward. <clears throat> and, you know, what, what we're asking for is um, uh, to finally rebalance how much money goes towards policing which is the single largest line item in the entire budget for the city of Toronto, uh, well over a billion dollars, and invest in uh, more resilient communities, uh, communities with supports for our, our, our youth and others who uh, are vulnerable, and also you know, proven alternatives to policing that can help de-escalate situations and provide support with real trained professionals who are better equipped than the police in many cases uh, to support uh, the individuals in distress and uh, and contribute to safer communities. So I, I believe we've made some progress, but yes, there's a lot of work to, to come. Some of the other things that were supported, I was just indicating that they they did get approval from your council colleagues, the, the body cams by the start of next year. But again, further to your, your point about you'd like to see the money elsewhere and other types of community supports bolstered, looking into this yes. creation of a non-police response to some mental health calls. The mayor says this is a step along the way to exactly what you're seeking. Do you think those are themselves positive turns? Well, of course. I mean, I, I appreciate that the mayor uh, uh, certainly uh, is is recognizing the import of what we are asking for. The problem is, is that while we share uh, some of the same rhetoric and and certainly uh, you know some of the, some of the same language, uh, the substance of the motions were very different. Um, uh, the mayor's motion that was approved not only doesn't uh, take any money from the police budget this year, what it does is it actually increases the police budget by tens of millions of dollars. So, uh, you know, while I, I, I look forward to working with the mayor towards our, our common goals, uh, the, the motions we move matter and how we write them means something. But down the road, he says, I mean, if the monies are changed, if these reports lead to this type of non-police response down the road, the police budget will shrink. There have been a lot of down the road discussions for many, many years. There are studies that are sitting on, on, on dusty shelves from a decade ago moving in this direction. It is time to actually do something about it. And my motion, by the way, you know, didn't just cut anything overnight. It was a request of the police services board that would have then have our social uh, development staff, our city manager, and our combating anti-black racism unit along with, you know, in consultation with the community come forward in the budget cycle with you know, substantive recommendations on how to move forward with respect to policing alternatives and community support. So um, you know, I, I also agree that you don't do anything hasty, but I want it done now rather than one day maybe. And it's really easy to make announcements, but uh, you know, very few of those actually uh, uh, you know, are, are seen through to fruition, unfortunately. And we've seen that. 
There are many people who are in tents now just in front of Toronto's City Hall and Nathan Phillips Square who also want something done now. They actually thought your 10% figure did not go far enough. They're looking at more like 50%, uh, which was not on the table, but we're looking at pictures of them. What message do you think uh, the defeat of your motion sends to them? Well, they, they can speak for themselves better than I can uh, or should. Certainly what I'm hearing from them is that um, there are many black, indigenous, and people of color in our city um, who are telling us that the model of policing not only is not working for them, but you know, data will support what they're saying. Uh, if you are black in this city, uh, you have a 20% higher chance of being shot by the police uh, than a white person uh, would. That's just unacceptable. Things have to change. No reasonable person, I would submit, would would, would would argue with that. It's a matter of do we make changes now in real ways, genuine ways, or do we sort of just ask for more studies and more consideration uh, over things that we already uh, know to be true? And 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 I think you know this this is this is the conflict right now. It's clearly a big moment, uh, and Toronto City Council responding to that. I'm wondering, you've been a councillor since 2010, so 10 years now, uh, representing yeah. your ward. What have what have you perceived in terms of um, your constituents' ev evolution on this issue? But I'm also interested in your own personal evolution, because um, yeah. going back to the 2016 budget, you voted against, at that time, cutting the police budget, but now you're putting forward a motion to, in fact, proceed with a 10 percent count. So, a uh, cut, rather. So, figure in your own mm -hmm. experience, perhaps, into this, why, why then, and what has changed now? Well, I'll start by saying that the, the context of the vote in 2016 was very different than uh, the one today. With, uh, when I say context, I mean the actual emotions. But honestly, I, yes, I have been on a personal journey. Um, I, I recognize that I, I've needed to listen, learn, and, and, and understand um, what so many voices who I just haven't heard well enough, I think, have been telling us, not just recently, not just since the, the murder of George Floyd, but for so many years, and you know, I'm I'm understanding better even my role as far as um, the fact that I am white, that I have that privilege, and that when I walk through my neighborhood at night, I don't fear that somebody's going to stop me and just ask me why am I walking through my neighborhood. Where if I was a young black person, um, the likelihood would be greater. That it, and 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 then you don't know where that might escalate from. And so yes, I've I've been on a I've been on I've been growing. I've been learning. And I realized that not only are those voices important to listen to, but they've got the facts behind them. And my role now as somebody elected is to advance those voices and support those voices. Before I let you go this morning, if we could, there are a couple of key issues before council, as you well know, uh, this week, not just uh, the anti-black racism and criminal justice issues, but also COVID-19. And in just about... 35 minutes, we're going to hear from the mayor making an announcement we believe related to the mandatory wearing of masks. Can you look ahead to that, what your understanding is of where the city is, is or what the city is going to announce and uh, your support or not of it? I don't know what the mayor is going to announce, but certainly there are indicators given you know, what, what mayors in the region have announced that we're moving towards um, a mandatory uh, a mandatory mask wearing in, in, in public settings, uh, indoors. And, um, you know, I, I know that's been controversial. I know some, you know, don't want to do that. I think that we do need to consider people with disabilities where there might be genuine difficulties. But I do agree that out of an abundance of caution, given what we do know, there's a lot we don't know, but what we do know about how this virus is transmitted, um, it's a reasonable, at least temporary measure. Um, you know, you know, early in the pandemic, I remember a lot of people wondering, you know, I mean, some said that the government didn't go far enough, but many wondered why did they go so far in so many things. And I think reasonable people would agree that if if we get through this better than not, you know, we will never be able to prove that we went, you know, too far. Uh, but certainly we will know if we didn't do enough. And I think that, uh, you know, given given the jeopardy that we would be in through a second wave, if we didn't do everything responsibly now, it's reasonable. It's reasonable to do whatever we know we can 
to mitigate the transmission of this virus. We've seen too many people die already. We will find out in just over 30 minutes. I appreciate the time and your thoughts uh, this morning. Councillor Matlow, that's Toronto City Councilor. Josh Matlow, who's in Toronto. Thanks very much, sir.